Hey everyone, welcome to Weld.com. It's Red Beard here, your one and only. As you guys already know, Bingo's been teaching me a lot about pipe. What'd you call this stuff? Pipe. Pipe. I think I'm pretty good. I think I'm better than him already. Man Cub over there, he's gonna tack up some pipe for me and he's gonna throw it up in a 6G position. All right, Man Cub, tack it up. I already got it set up for you, bro. I got your back. You know I'm a CWI. Holy crap! What'd you do? Bingo said he welds this all day. That is correct. All right, we're gonna be attempting to do this uh, 6G, 6010 route here. We're gonna weld it all the way out. Uh, normally, you would not weld this like this. They would cut it apart, rebevel it. Uh, normally, it's never over an eighth inch on your mismatch uh, on your high low. But yeah, we're gonna try to attempt this. So I'm gonna run 6010, eighth inch. We're gonna start at 60 amps. All right, probably work our way down as the pipe heats up. So the pipe's already cold. I'm gonna start right here on this worst spot. Uh, I'm gonna put like the tack right there. Then I'm gonna kind of go a crescent motion back and forth like this and just move it back and forth. Make sure that puddle stain is freezing pretty good. If it starts falling out, that tells me I need to move. When you know it started getting hot really bad is um, when you pull your helmet down or when you lift up your helmet and you put it back down. And if it's still orange on your passive, if you have a regular passive one, if it's still orange, you know it's freaking hot too. That's a good indication as a uh, quick temp guide. And I'm just gonna jump back over here and just keep moving back and forth on the pipe. So I'm gonna basically strike, strike my arc inside the bevel. And I'm gonna kinda just jump over there, let it, uh, let it warm up and kinda melt in, then hurry up, jump back across. And I'm just gonna bridge it, bridge it right across. Cause you don't wanna let it sit there cause it's, cause it's gonna get really hot really quick. And you gotta do this many times, probably five or six times, you gotta jump across and let that come back, let it come together and build up. If not, it's just gonna fall out on you. It all looks like crap, so it don't matter. <laughs> all right, she's hot. I'm gonna jump over to the other side, weld that. Then I'm gonna come back and turn my amps down 10. All right, so I'm putting my rod like this. See it, how it's at an angle? Because it's kind of like that a little bit. So it's gonna be easier for me and more comfortable, all right? And so we're gonna go ahead and start right here. I'm a long arc it, warm that tack up because I'm a little cold. I need that rod to heat up. All right, here we go. Come on. Well, I'm just long arc it and let it warm up a lot. And we're just gonna go ahead and load it like normal here. I'm gonna kind of keep my uh, stick out on the max eighth inch. And I'm just paying attention. This is not that bad over here. Yep. See, I'm running on the cold side because it's gonna get big up here. This gap. Just keeping straight in at 90 with it, with the puddle. And I'm just working it back and forth. And watching that puddle uh, slows by. All right, I'm gonna make sure that puddle goes solid. Solid is your friend, look at that puddle. It will tell you everything. All right, coming in on our tack, so I'm gonna go ahead and push in a little bit, let it fill up. And I'm just gonna kind of keep working it. Working it, then we're gonna stop. And that's it. She looks pretty good. I mean, we got nice good fusion right here. I like it, I love it. We're working with what we got. So everything's good, I like it. We're gonna jump over to the other side and turn down at 10. Or turn me up five, as Redbeard says. Fire your machine, drop your hood, and turn me up five. That's my favorite part. Look, it gave me cold chills, I love it. So I turned my amps down to 50 because we got a big gap and we're gonna be like, coming up here whipping it out and letting that puddle solidify because that's going to get hot really quick because we're like focusing focusing a lot of heat on one small little area for a long time right. one time keep a long arc let this rod warm up i'm just going to come over here i'm just going to throw this up She's going in good. Look, I don't even have to whip that much ahead of the puddle. Watch, see it just went solid, come back in. Just go crescent seas. Look at that, she's going in good. Yeah. She's starting to get a little warm because I'm going slower. I mean, it's making me go slower. I gotta add more filler wire. Or filler wet metal. But we're still going. We'll just whip up more, let it cool over a couple more seconds longer.
We're getting there. She's going. We're gonna make it. Yay. Oh, almost stalled up. Almost stalled it. Like an engine. <laughs> I'll about. All right, so we struck an arc right here. Ah, uh, little no bad. Rod got warm up. That's why it's kind of humped up. As soon as the rod started getting warm and the pipe got warmer, it started wetting out good. You can see how nice it looks. Very beautiful, beautiful. Good tying on the toes. Um, I mean, we look pretty good. I like it. So we're going to go ahead and just start, start right here and just continue all the way over here this time. Before we get started, Jason, turn me up five. Mm, fire. There we go. A little whipping now. Starting to warm up. Keeping my arc on on the max side, like eighth inch. Sometimes a little tighter. But I'm just making sure I'm burning in both sides of the bevel. That's it. Now I'll probably just, just leave my rod in there. Tear it. It's going in pretty good. We're going downhill, so it's going to help us keep that puddle from falling out and help help us move faster. Right. It's getting warm right here. You want to make sure you're tying in on both sides of the bevel. You have to. We're going to get lack of fusion. You kind of do the same technique when you're, um, when you're doing on square tubing. It's in what gauge too. And we're going to call it quits. All right, so let's start here at the beginning. So we struck the arc about a quarter inch back, long arced it, let that rod heat up, stood on my or max eighth inch side of my arc length and letting that rod just stay warm because um, when you increase your arc length, you're gonna increase your amps. And I was just doing that until that rod got warm and the pipe got warm and just kind of go in a C crescent and making sure I'm eating in that bevel. You should see it melting down or melting away, all right? And just kind of do a C crescent all the way down. And that's it. I didn't have to whip it up. I didn't have to whip far ahead because it was running pretty good. The puddle wasn't getting really erratic or anything. We just kept going at Crescent the whole time. And that's it. Nice and easy. If I could do it, you could do it. All right, you see what's going on here, guys? So right here, we got a big old gap. She's big. And then we got this tight area. There's, you got two options to do, two. Either take a thin grinding wheel like a pipe liner and just jam it in there, open that gap, and uh, leave your machine at 65 amps, or you could crank your machine up to like 90 amps, punch through right here, keep coming until your keyhole starts getting unstable or you can't keep it under control, stop, turn your amps back down, all right? So I'm gonna to choose to crank this up to 90, strike an arc, and we're gonna go ahead and put pressure on this rod and, and help push it through, all right? So let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. And we're gonna start pushing in. I'm gonna try to whip it, try to keep it under control because that gap's big. Oh, it's starting to open up a minute. All right, and we're gonna stop now. See how hot it got? It got really hot, it's orange. That is really hot, so, and you can tell my keyhole is like triple the size it should be. So we're gonna drop it down to uh, probably 55 because more we travel, more it's gonna get bigger. And what heat's gonna do? Heat rises, so it'll get hotter up here than down here. All right, let's do this again. We're gonna have a little lump right here. Got a long arc, it, keep it warm. We're gonna be whipping this a lot because we're going uphill. We're putting a lot of heat on this. Out in now. Oops. Right, it stinks. Me. Oh yeah, you see that top lip? We gotta fill that up. Keep them keeping up more than the bottom. So 
but we have to fill this up. You got to whip up a lot. This is eating up up here. <clears throat> See how that's orange? That's really hot, but we're going to keep going here. A long arc it, but this rod, this is pipe's pretty warm, so it's going to be all right. We don't have to really preheat this with the long arc much. All right, since this is uh, too hot, I'm gonna switch up here and start running downhill. Cause I'm fighting, it's fighting with me and it's gonna be, it looks huge and ugly. So we're just gonna go like this. I'm tired of fighting with it. She's whipping my butt. All right, she's getting hot. We're gonna jump back over here. She's gonna look like crap. But hey, that's why they make grinders, right? So we'll have to let that cool, come back in, fire that back up, let that cool. This is the pipe so hot. Come back up, let it cool. Wait about a couple seconds. Just keep firing her up. Wait a couple seconds. Remember, this ain't no x-ray pipe, no lives matter on it. You can use this as a pole in your shop or something in your shed, all right? I'm gonna let that cool. I'm gonna flip back over because I have a little bit more on this side. She's gonna look ugly on this side, for sure. No doubt. My legs are numb, I can't feel it. She ain't pretty. But remember, we're not doing no critical work here. No lives depend on this. But hey, the number of tricks you're gonna learn out in the field, they're gonna help you. You're gonna run into this problem when you're doing stuff. All right? But uh, yeah, she'll slap her, all right? <laughs> but fire, son! Fire! All right, we're gonna throw this up in the 5G, put a level on it, and let you guys look how bad that is. If you wanna try this, have fun with it. Definitely gonna help you understand how that puddle works because you're gonna keep whipping it out and coming back in. You're understanding how to get your timing right with that puddle and, uh, just, and keep filling that joint up, all right? So definitely, this will definitely help you. You're gonna come across this. You can even use this as, with square tubing, same techniques too. Bingo welding, so we're good there. I like it. As long as he likes it, I love it from my house. All right guys, remember learning is key. And make every weld better than your last.